Cripper is next up for the 2020 season review. And Cripper, look, he had a very interesting year. Um, going into the season, he had come off a really good 2019. You know, his peers had voted him the best player in the league. And, you know, we, I think the, the league wide had voted him as the best player, whether that was fans, coaches, or, or players. Uh, and I think with that came the expectation that he would just continue on as he had been doing for a couple of years now, right in that top bracket, you know, uh, top three or four players in the league. Um, he started off really hot, really, really hot. He had the 31 against Richmond in round one, um, over 20 in the first uh, five games. We get to the Doggies game, and that's where he had his first, I don't know, I guess you can call it a, a poor game by his standards. He had the 13 touches, and um, it's I'm, I'm talking about that game because... There is a notion that, and we think it's true, we, I think we know it's true now, that he was playing injured throughout the year. Now, what was it? Pretty sure it's a shoulder. Um, you know, filming this the day after the Brownlow medal, you know, he's at the Brownlow with a sling. He's been in a sling for a couple of weeks now, I think. So he's had surgery. And so it, it makes me think, okay, maybe that doggies game was the first one. He didn't seem to move um, with the same prolific energy as he had in years gone by. And, uh, you know, this is this was also a year where he openly talked about how he lost a few kilos this, this year to, to be a bit more lighter and, and perhaps run games out and finish the season uh, stronger than what he had in the past because he, at times throughout his career, he sort of, he plays so hard. You know, we, we know how he plays in his game style that it's just sometimes it's not sustainable, you know, to play every game like that. So... There is a big tick for his year, and that is the fact that he played every single game. Now, there is a notion out there that, you know, maybe he should have been rested, he should have been managed, you know, you can call it mismanagement all you like. But I think if you're a player, I mean, this is just my, my gut feel, you want to try and play every single game. And I think that is in the back of, of your mind. You want to get every single game out. And I think if you do that, uh, you should be credited somewhat for that. And I, I think it was a really good effort for him to to battle through because, you know, listen, not everything goes your way. You know, sometimes you're going to have to grit, you know, bite your teeth and just push through. And, and that seems like what happened with him. Now, there's, there's two things for me this year which stand out as a mitigating factor for his season. One, obviously, the injury. Um, there were reports throughout the year. It was a back, his shoulder. Don't know what it was, but there was a clearly something hampering him. It's a, it's a shoulder injury, we now know. The second thing was his, his lovely partner who came out this year and, and, and spoke about her battles with, with mental illness. And, you know, when you, when you couple that in with the long distance, um, you know, the hub life, there's a few things going on here mentally. And, and who knows, maybe it was one of the, and he's the captain of the football club as well, best player in the league. He gets all this attention, the pressure, the scrutiny. So when you couple all of these things together, it's really the perfect storm for um, just an emotionally draining season for him. And I can't help but, but sympathize with him for that. Now, you know, it's it can be hard at times for us as fans to remember that we're talking about human beings here. You know, yes, they're football players, they're great football players, they're great athletes, um, but the reality is they're human beings. You know, they're human beings just like us. They they pay their bills, um, they have their issues, uh, they learn things on the go, uh, they make mistakes, and uh, this situation is no different. Yes, Cripps is a superstar, but he's just a human being, a regular human being like every single one of us. So um, those are some things why I, I look back at his season and, and take a step back and understand what he was potentially going through. Um, but the reality is he's played every game. Uh, he's, he's fronted up. He's acknowledged his performances. And, and look, for me, with this group, if we're going to win the flag with this group, we need, obviously, everyone's got to be at their best, but your best players have to be at their best. So uh, I'm hoping that with a, another preseason under his belt, he now, it's crazy, man. These careers fly by. You know, he, he enters that second half of his career now. He's not the prodigy anymore. Um, and it's interesting. I've spoken about that notion a lot. You know, Simo's now gone. It wasn't so long ago that he was the young skinny kid in the team. Murphy as well, the young prodigy. And, you know, you expect because they're so good, they're going to stay good forever. But things happen. You know, we know he's had a shoulder operation. Is that going to affect him moving forward with his tackling, with his marking? So you just got to not take it for granted. And I hope that he gets healthy 
physically, mentally, hopefully comes back home. Um, hopefully, you know, this lockdown ends and it's back to, you know, somewhat normal compared to what it has been this season. And it allows him to step away from footy. You know, I know that he lives, you know, lives in Melbourne, the footy bubble, but, um, you know, when you're in a hub, that's that's an, a proper bubble. You know, you, you want to be able to get away from footy here and there. And I don't know what he does. He might go for walks. I don't know what his hobbies are, but um, I'm hoping that he gets back to his best next year. I back him in to do that. I love the fact that he endured this year. Things didn't go his way in a variety of uh, of ways, but he endured, and I hope that uh, it turns next year and he reminds us all, and then the competition as well, why he was looked at as the best player in the league. I still think he's got so much to offer. I love the fact that his teammates around him have improved this year. It's not just the Crip show anymore. He's got Walsh now, who's a bona fide player. You know, we saw the emergence of Jacob Wiedering, you know, probably back end of 2019, but really in 2019. So Doherty's back as well with another preseason under his belt off the knees. So I, I think we're very well placed, as, you know, also when we're going to go talk about getting players in through trade period and then natural development next year. So there's plenty of good talent around him, which needs to start rising um, because uh, this notion of, you know, getting the Crips help, it needs to stop. We need to stop talking about it like he's the only good player on the team because he's not. He's a very good player, but he's not the only good player on the team. Uh, so I'm looking forward to his, um, his, his, his preseason for 2021. I hope everything's going well in his world, obviously. Um, we love him. You know, he's, he's you know, co-captain of the football club and uh, he holds a very special place in all their hearts for sure. So... That's what I thought of his season. What about you? Uh, how did you view his season? Did you give him any points mentally for, for finishing every game this season? Or did you just think he should have had a rest? Let me know in the comments below. Because, uh, yeah, this was a very... I think this was a polarizing season for Cripps. You know, almost led the league in clearances. On the one hand, on the other hand, it was okay. Well, he won the clearances, but where did they go? What happened in key moments? So yeah, pl plenty of learnings for Cripper this year, I think. But we'll chat about it in the comments and see where the conversation takes us.